Hello and welcome to GigaOM. Today, we're going to explain the ins and outs of the GigaOM radar. The GigaOM radar synthesizes our practitioner led, data driven analysis of a technology sector. The GigaOM radar plots vendor solutions across four quadrants and three circles, with the centermost circle depicting the bullseye. The closer to the center bullseye of the radar chart a vendor sits, the better its execution and value. It's important to understand GigaOM is fundamentally a research organization run by engineers, practitioners, and people working in the field using these technologies every day. The radar is also designed by engineers, and anyone who's worked with an engineer knows engineers love nuance. The radar is a three-dimensional image, and it contains all 1,000 words that you could possibly put into a picture. Let's start with the basics. The center is the target, there is no good or bad quadrant. All of the quadrants have a distinct purpose based on service to the customer. Getting close to the center is the goal. Let's break down the quadrants and we'll build a radar to help you better understand how to read one. We'll start with the maturity versus innovation hemispheres. Maturity being northerly, innovation being southerly. When we think about maturity, what we're really saying is how much we expect the fundamental utilization of the platform to change through the contract life. Ideally, this is three years, but it could be 18 months, depending on the average usage of the platform. Mature platforms tend to add innovation and add features in a way that's a little bit more subtle. They don't generally do big bang additional features you'll still see changes, improvements, innovations, and iterations, but ultimately, the platform will continue to operate mostly the way that you are used to the platform operating. If we look at innovation, however, innovators are really looking to kind of shake things up. They're more likely to introduce big bang features, make large changes, make fundamental changes to the user interface, or they might just be quicker to adopt new demands from the market than those vendors on the maturity side of the hemisphere. There are pluses and minuses to both hemispheres, and you really need to think about what is best for your business. We don't buy these things because they're flashy. We don't buy these things because of their hotness. We buy these things to gain value, to add value to our business, and both hemispheres have value that they can bring. If your business is quick to adopt, if your teams are very agile, if you're running using new value stream engineering or new operating models, innovation might fit really well. However, if your teams are mature teams that are slow to change and slow to innovate, you may find that maturity gives you a little bit more of the stability you're looking for and allows you to continue to move forward while not disrupting your day-to-day -day business. Now, as we look to the East and Western hemispheres, we get into platform play versus feature play. What we see with platform play is within the wide landscape of the category of the market, a platform play is attempting to solve to the 80th percentile. They may not be phenomenal at any one thing, but they're pretty good at the 80th percentile of what customers want. All of these things are evolving, so don't just look at the platform and where it is today. Think about where it is likely to be through the contract life, post-purchase. Does it do enough today to accomplish what you need it to? And will the vendor mature fast enough to keep up with your internal maturity? Feature play is much more geared to customers who say, we already have some of these capabilities within our organization, but we're looking for specific things we'd like to add, specific targets we'd like to go after. It's much more the 20th percentile. And while we expect them to be narrower in offering, we also expect them to be more targeted and deeper. They might do one feature spectacularly well, or they could focus on an industry to the exclusion of others. Both of these would qualify as feature plays. With platform plays, neither of those things can be true. Let's take it a step deeper now so that you understand the quadrants. Let's take a look at the rings. The rings do some broad categorization and operate based on how far from the center they are. We don't expect anyone to score and place exactly the same as anyone else. And really, when you're looking at a buyer's guide and when you're down to selecting vendors, the most important question is, which is the quadrant that I need to buy from here? From there, you determine who the vendors are that you should talk to. And the best way to do that is to take a look at the circle that makes the most sense. There are three rings or circles, leader, challenger, and entrant. Starting with entrant, 
Entrants are the furthest from the center. We expect them to be the least mature applications or offerings within the space overall, and thus, they are furthest from the center. These are companies that you probably want to pay attention to, especially based on the color and direction of the arrow. We'll cover that in a moment. Then we move to challengers. These are those that are more than likely pushing towards the center, and we expect to be the kind of companies to pay attention to in the future. But they still may not have a complete enough of an offering to purchase from them quite yet. Now, again, you're going to see a lot of changes in markets that are less well-established, so we shouldn't ignore vendors in the challenger ring. If you're doing your strategic planning for the next 12 to 18 months, it's probably a good idea to look at the challengers and the leaders and determine who you have a relationship with. Set up meetings to find out where they plan to go and see what happens. Do we need to buy from the leader circle or is there a challenger that better fits our needs? Finally, you get to the leader circle. These offerings are those that are in the best space. They are closest to the center they have the most complete solutions and a comprehensive vision. The center itself is represented by the bullseye. When you view the plotted radar, you will notice there is no one in the bullseye. We tell vendors whilst it is not theoretically impossible to achieve this position, however, it represents perfection in the space. And since customers and markets are continually evolving and asking more and more of vendors, the bullseye is kind of a moving target and constant evolution and change will make this position hard to reach. Let's go one layer deeper. Let's take a look at how we plot a vendor on the radar. We score the key features, the business criteria, and emerging features, and then use those scores to plot where a vendor will end up on the radar. These scores determine its distance from center and which quadrant they are in. It is important to remember that it is not a light switch for quadrants. These are circles, not lines, in one scenario, you could have a vendor that is a 3 out of 10 in maturity and a 7 out of 10 in innovation. So they would end up more in the innovation hemisphere, moving towards maturity. Again, the center of the target is ideal. You can see here we have a placeholder company plotted based on its score, and that puts them at a distance from center and in a particular quadrant. In addition to the score, which gives them their position, we also have an arrow, which is important because the arrow inspires directionality. For those that are pointed directly towards the center, we expect to see a trajectory moving towards the bullseyes in subsequent reports. And not all companies are moving towards the center. They may take a focus on continuing to move towards innovation or moving from feature play to platform play and not moving closer to the center. It's also important to note the color of the label and the arrow has meaning as well. Those companies in light blue are forward movers and are evolving at the slowest pace within the market. Those that are in the dark blue, fast movers, and are moving effectively with the market at pace. And then you have the orange. They are moving faster than the market. In other words, they are outpacing the market on their delivery. If you combine all of this, you can see you have only five companies in the leader circle. You have one blue and one orange in the maturity platform play space. You have one light blue and one orange in the innovation platform play space. You only have one in the innovation feature play quadrant in dark blue. And you have none in the maturity feature play quadrant. If you were looking at buying, once you determine which quadrant makes the most sense for you, let's choose innovation platform play as an example. You now have to say, well, the one closest to the center is light blue, so they're not really continuing to keep at pace with the market. However, the one directly behind them is an outperformer, and so year after year, we would expect them to evolve at a faster pace and deliver more innovation and more maturity to the market. This is intended to give you an extremely nuanced view of the market and the space, and allows you to put together a list of those that you should invite for a meeting. We're not telling you who to buy, we're trying to help you down-select a shortlist of the vendors that make the most sense for you to bring into the room and help you complete your projects. We hope you have found this helpful, and we look forward to working together.